Late, we're going to talk about pronou pronouncing short words in the context of sentences so that you understand how these short words can make a difference and actually alter in sound. Now, once again, I want to credit the source, Mark Hancock. Thank you. I'm taking my lead from here. He does a great job. And that's at CUP, English Pronunciation in Use. We're going to start out with a recipe. Now, I've got my text here as well because it's a bit small for me on the screen. I apologize. But we're going to read one line at a time, and I want you to under... You'll, you'll be able to see how these short words have a little bit of a change in their pronunciation. So here we go. Shopping list. Some milk and eggs. some milk and eggs. <clears throat> now, if you notice, the and is truncated or shortened to n. Watch this, milk and eggs. Milk and eggs. It's like n, we just say n. Some milk and eggs. Very interesting. And eggs. And eggs. Very strange, I know it. Some milk and eggs. Next, we have a ton of peas. A ton of peas. <clears throat> now, if I go quickly, I say uh. If I slow down, I say of. And that's the big difference. And I, I, I think most people just say uh. Sometimes I will say of because I speak slowly. But let's pretend that we're speaking quickly. A ton of peas. I literally said a ton of peas, a ton of peas, a snack for lunch, a snack for lunch, some fruit and cheese. Do you hear the and? Listen again. Some fruit and cheese. What do I actually say? Fruit and cheese. Fruit and cheese, very strange. Some fruit and cheese, please. The loaf of bread. Again, the of almost sounds like a. Uh. The loaf of bread. A jar of jam. You hear the of gets swallowed a bit. A jar of jam. A jar of jam. The F and the J elide into sort of one nuanced sound. A jar of jam. Then we have some juice, some juice to drink. Some juice to drink. And we'll focus on the to drink. Some juice to drink. And then a piece of ham. A piece of ham. Now, interestingly, of here sounds a bit more because ham is a very soft, it's almost, it almost functions like a vowel beginning. H-A is a very soft beginning. So the F comes through a bit more. A, um, a piece of ham, of ham. So you hear the F more. You hear it less when you have a hard consonant or a strong consonant sound. Some pears or grapes. Some pears or grapes. Do you hear that? Or grapes. Pears or grapes. Some beans and rice. Again, the N sound. Some beans and rice. And rice. And rice. Beans and rice. A can of beer. Here's where of sounds like A. A can of beer.
as cold as ice. Now here I've slowed it down. Let's go a bit faster and see what happens. As cold as ice. The S latches on to the next word almost. As ice. As ice. As cold as ice. All right. I'm very interested to get your feedback on this pronunciation class. Let me know throughout the course of the class if this is helpful at all. I've, I, I just realized as I was going through the Hancock book that this we've never actually talked about these little words. They tend to be overlooked. And I have a great um, phrasal verb. We generally pay no heed to the small words. To pay heed to something is to focus on it. I used it in the negative. Heed is H-E-E-D. We generally pay little heed to these small words. And I think it's really interesting to talk about them. Let's go to the next one here. This is, um, again, it's what I've already spoken about. The and sort of transforms into an and of into a. So let's listen. An apple and an orange and an onion. And I want to focus on the last one. As I was practicing this, I realized very interestingly, I said the first and a bit more. The second one, I didn't at all. The second one is an an onion. An an onion. An an onion. And an onion. It's a bit of a tongue twister, I know it. And an onion. Let's do that again. And an onion. And an onion. Very interesting. All right, let's do the whole sentence, the whole phrase. An apple and an orange and an onion. One more time, for some of you, it might be a little bit, for some of you, I know this is very easy. It comes very natural, but I know for others, it's very complicated. An orange and an apple, I'm sorry, an apple and an orange and an onion. I love that last one. And an onion. All right. Let's do the of that sounds like an A, a bit of this. And a bit of that. Now, I used of, but most people would say a bit of this and a bit of that. They would normally say that uh, I try to pronounce all the vowels or all the consonants, all the uh, syllables, but I know most people will say a bit of this and a bit of that. Bit of this, bit of that. A bit of this, a bit of that. Now all together, a bit of this and a bit of that. All right, I'm very interested to know as well which of these sentences caused you the most difficulty and I will know to focus on some of those in the future. So any feedback you have, and if you want to share this um, video as we're going through, if you want to share it on your Instagram, please do and let others know about it. All right, we, okay, so now we have the to and the the sound is different when it follows a vowel. So let's look at this and we'll, we'll read the first sentence normal, then we will slow down. We need water to drink and food to eat. To, to drink, sorry, to drink, to eat. So before the D, the consonant, it softens to drink. And in front of a vowel, it's stronger to eat. It's a stronger O to eat, to drink, to eat. Do you hear the difference? It's very interesting to drink, to eat, to eat. It's a stronger to, to eat, to drink, to eat. All right, let's do it one more time all together. We need water to drink 
and food to eat. All right, the second sentence, I'll have the fish and the apple pie for dessert. All right, if we slow, okay, I'll slow down a bit. If we slow this sentence down, you'll see that the the has a different sound depending on the, the, the syllable that comes right after the word. So the fish, the apple. The fish, the apple. Do you hear the difference? The fish, the apple. And it's the because we have a, con a vowel afterwards or a soft sound and we need a strong E because it's easier to distinguish the sounds. The apple, the fish, because we have an F, a consonant afterwards, we can have a soft vowel sound there. The fish, the apple. I'll have the fish and the apple for dessert, and the apple pie for dessert. One more time because I made a mistake. I'll have the fish and the apple pie for dessert. All right, now we're going to do, let's see here. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit of repeating, a, 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 a bit more fluency practice, then I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna put you to work and you're gonna have an in-class exercise so get ready to listen and write or make a note just five short questions but I'm, i i want you to practice with me okay so number one we'll we'll do the first variant as then the second variant and i had a salad as a main course i had a salad as a main course Now the second, I had a salad and a main course. Do you hear the and? You don't hear the D much. I'll ha I had a salad and a main course. All right, number two, give her an egg if she's hungry. Give her an egg if she's hungry. An egg. All right, number three. She went to, let's just do the second variant here. She went to look for the fruit. She went to look for the fruit. I guess we can try the first one. She went to look at the fruit. I don't, hear much of a difference. So let's move to number four. I don't think there's a great change in these words, those two particular words in that sentence. He gave me a basket of bread. Do you hear how the of transposes a bit into a? He gave me a basket of bread. Next, um, he gave me a basket he gave me a basket for bread. Here there's not much of a change. So let's move to number five. Get some pasta and rice. Get some pasta and rice. And rice. And rice. You don't hear the and, do you? All right, let's move to sentence number six. I like the cook. I like the cook. I like to cook. Or I like to cook. I like to cook. To cook. Do you hear that? I like to cook. I like to cook, to cook, to cook. Yeah, when you go quick, right. I 
I've lost my screen for a minute. Let's go here. Oh. Can you all see my screen? Something has happened. Wow. I cannot see my screen. So we have a problem. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to turn the comments on for a minute. This has never happened before. Can, your, can you tell me, can someone write in the comments, I've turned the comments on, can you see my screen? I, ca I cannot see anything. Oh, okay, great. Wow, this is, this is the first time. So let me, uh, it's not showing on mine, but let, thank you for the feedback. So I'm gonna to go to number six, like before, I'm gonna assume it's, it's there. It's really weird, okay, great. So uh, I'm gonna turn off the comments and I'm gonna read from here because it's completely black. I can't even see myself, this is very interesting. Okay, she ordered a soup. She ordered a soup. She ordered the soup. She ordered the soup. Now, it's interesting to note the difference in meaning here. A lot, of, a lot of people ask about articles, what's the difference? I think this is a very salient example. A salient example is a good example, a clear example. Salient, S-A-L-I-E-N-T. And a salient example means, uh, uh, so she ordered a soup means a soup, but we don't know which one. She ordered the soup, the soup we were talking about two, five minutes ago. All right, have some orange juice. Have some orange juice. Or have an orange juice. Have an orange juice. Now, it's very interesting. There was a, a debate recently on this, but an orange juice, some people will say, but orange, you can't count juice, so why do you have an? Just like a, a coffee, I'd like a coffee. And in English, we use an orange juice or a coffee to mean a cup of coffee. We just shorten the phrase, but we understand it to be actually grammatically correct with a coffee because we just omit the words cup of. Let's go to number nine. He invited me for lunch. He invited me for lunch. And then next we have, he made this jar of jam. Of, you, you, of sort of disappears, listen, of jam. The F and the J sort of merge into one sound of jam, of jam. He made this jar of jam himself. All right, I'm gonna switch to the next slide. I'm gonna turn on the comments again to see if you can actually see these. Okay, so I'm now on listening practice. We're gonna do a bit of listening practice. I'm gonna turn the comments on so you can tell me if you see the next screen, it's a glass of milk. Do you see that at the top, a glass of milk? Okay, great. Now I'm going to pronounce the next ones and I want you to tell me which ones they are, all right? So I'm gonna shut the comments off so we can focus. I'm gonna read it twice, you write in the words in the blank. There are two per number, two per line. Ready? And I'm gonna do it in a normal speed. Here we go. It's time for lunch. It's time for lunch. So try to write those words. What words are missing? I'll give you the answers in a minute so you can check. Okay, number two, an egg and chips. Now, in England, they might say some egg and chips, actually. 
but I'm going to say an egg and chips. An egg and chips. What am I saying? Write those two words. One more time. An egg and chips. An egg and chips is what I literally said. Very, what words are those? Number three, a bag of nuts. A bag of nuts. Write the two words that are missing. A bag of nuts. Number four, let's drink and eat. Let's drink and eat. One more time, let's drink and eat, number four. And number five, let's cook some rice. Let's cook some rice. All right, let's cook some rice. So for those of you who did do it, I'm gonna share with you the answers. Oh, excuse me. I'm gonna share with you the answers here. Do you see those? Take a look, you can look and see how you did. And then I'm gonna give you homework. I'm gonna have you do numbers six to nine. So take a look at that. If you have any questions, you can write me at the bottom in the question button, press it and write your question. Hopefully I'll be able to see them. I can't see the screen, it's very strange. Okay, now I'm gonna give you your homework so you can take a screenshot of it. It's six to nine. Now, the number six is weird and difficult, and don't worry if you don't get it, it's not common, and I'm not even sure I got it right. But seven, eight, and nine, I think are pretty standard. So try seven, eight, and nine. Send me your answers or put the answers below the live. I'm going to upload this live at the conclusion of this. Uh, I'm gonna upload the video at the conclusion of this live. And then, um, I'll post the answers later in the comments. All right, let's hear your comments. I wanna take some questions. All right, very good. Thank you, Malta or Maria, Maria. Okay. Very good. I'm looking for questions at the moment. Oh, here is one. Okay, I'm not able to, oh, I can see the questions. Pause and pause. Exactly the same pronunciation. Homophones, we call them. Pause means to, to stop running, to take a break. And pause are hands on a bear or on a, on a dog. You have, they have paws. All right, pause. <clears throat> Thank you, Sherry, I will save it. I hope this video comes up. I'm not able to see anything, so it's a bit awkward. Okay, someone's asked me, um, Chata Sesha has asked what accent I'm using. I'm using my own accent, which is a mixture of American and British English. For those of you who don't know me, I've, uh, maybe you're new to the channel, I grew up in the United States in the center. I have a very sort of clean, natural accent as the Midwesterners do. And then I studied in England and um, sort of a more proper British, I say proper, uh, a very particular British accent that you often find in uh, Oxford or Cambridge. And I was influenced, I guess, there because I lived and studied in England for a number of years and then I moved to Europe and I started to speak more slowly because I lived in Italy and if you don't speak slowly they don't understand you and so the result of this concatenation of uh, influences 
is that I speak like this, which is mainly American, but with a little bit of a British influence. And then I slowed down because of Europe. And for those of you who are curious, concatenation is a great word if you want to use it. It's a big word, it's an advanced word. Very few people are saying this word, but it's a really fun word to say. Con, just as it sounds, it's spelled concatenation. All right. Thank you very much, Dhamma. Very good. I'm seeing lots of answers. You've a lot of people participated actively. You can submit your home. Someone's asked how to submit the homework. You submit it by, you can send it to me directly in a pr direct message, or you can put it in the comments under the, under the video that I'll upload after the live. And I will look at the comments and make a comment on your comment on your answers. All right, very good. I see lots of answers here. So not many questions, but a lot of people participating, which is really good. Someone would like me to say pizza. Now, I don't say pizza normally because I lived in Italy and they would say pizza and they sort of pause. We had this word earlier. They pause in the middle of the word. And so I'm a little bit influenced by the Italian, but I'll try to be normal. Pizza. No, that's a little bit Italian. Pizza. Pizza. By the way, I love pizza. Pepperoni pizza is my favorite. All right. Well, okay. Neither nor. This is very good and very, very helpful. Very important question. Uh, neither nor, neither or nor, or you can say neither and nor. So neither or neither, but nor stays the same. But you, you, you can use either variant and they reflect the British and the American traditions, but nor remains constant. Now, I just want to show, I forgot to put this up, so I'll put it up while we're doing